Keisha, I've had an opportunity to serve witness to your, uh, the Miami Foundations and under your leadership and coordination, your intentional, deliberate efforts to engage in a, a, a form of strategic planning, that there is a level of intentionality, that there is a commitment to being deliberate and targeted and, and intentional about where resources are deployed and how we coordinate resources with respect to whether it's the arts or other programming. Zach talked about not working in silos. Can you talk about why is that important? Why has the Miami Foundation taken that approach? Yeah, so when we started to do this work, one of the things that we saw is that we found that there are principals who had a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations who were working in their community or in their schools. And then you had those schools that actually needed the most that maybe only had one or two. And so we started to go down this route and say, like, really, what is happening here? And what we found is that there was no rhyme or reason for how, you know, schools choose which nonprofits are in their, uh, in their schools. Oftentimes it could be that there's a pre existing relationship. It could be that the nonprofit finds that it's easier to work with the principal oftentimes. And as we know, when you are principal, you are juggling a lot. You are managing a lot. You want the resources in your school, but you've got a lot that you're trying to figure out, whether it be scheduling or how do you work with all of these nonprofit partners. And so what we wanted to do is figure out how is there equitable access to arts education. And so I will say we started by literally just putting out a survey and creating our own Google map. But in doing that, we knew that there was something a lot deeper that we needed to uncover. And so earlier this year, we, um, we launched what is called the Art Look Map. And what this is, is a, a map that that, uh, that tracks uh, what arts looks like in schools, what are the nonprofits that are providing uh, arts access in school and out of school, and what are some of the arts activities that are happening even beyond that uh, in this one map. So now the principals can use it so that they can understand, one, what are the opportunities exist? They can also go into the map and actually list the things that they want to be offered in their schools, but then also nonprofits can take advantage of this map because they can see what, uh, what services exist in what regions and what schools. And so so informed decisions can be made across the board. This map is also accessible to parents and teachers because now, or parents and students, because now they can also look at this uh, map to say, well, my child is really interested in this. And so I see where they're providing these courses in the school system, but then also there are these nonprofit organizations that are coming in and providing these extracurricular activities for students, be it during the school day or outside of the school day. And so at the end of the day, you know, for us, we wanted to make sure, again, that all kids have ha access to high quality arts education. And, and just in, in doing this research uh, earlier, we just found that it was happening in this haphazard way. And so we wanted to use the power of data to inform everyone so that everyone could make informed decisions. I've been on the vibe, kind of hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life.